as of this recording, both the World Youth Day and the World Scout Jamboree is ongoing. With the news out of Lisbon and the heat wave in Korea, respectively, I was wondering if I regret missing out or I am bitter not to be part of them. And to be clear, I am not on both counts. But you see, this sets the tone for this episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Because of sellouts who stray away from the very thing they try to uphold, hurt people could not help but do what they do and bring their grievances to light whenever they can. And sometimes, as someone who has been hurt or sidelined before, and perhaps because of my suspected neurodivergent brain's heightened sense of empathy, I absolutely understand why. I am Ian Rinyon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, this episode is sponsored by nobody, but let me go ahead and uh, promote or give a huge shout out to Trax Philippines and Cocola Philippines because uh, Trax Philippines is a fitness app. For uh, that is catered to Filipinos. Basically, this is uh, this is Strava, but with a reward system. You see, uh, when it comes to uh, let's say athletics, and because I cycle, uh, I definitely wanted to have. Uh, I really don't care if uh, there's a physical reward to that. But there are some people who who do think it would be best to have uh, some kind of reward for their um, for their achievements, whether it's cycling, walking, or running. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, the developers of Trax Philippines are already developing for other sports, but we'll see to that. But you know. Uh, it is a good bonus for those who think it would be good or it would be nice if maybe I can have uh, something for uh, something to uh, achieve for. And Trax Philippines is doing that. So basically, uh, you get uh, rewards for everything that you have done. And... Uh, and you know, Trax Philippines is an app that uh, gives uh, users the the rewards that they uh, that they deserve for uh, for achieving things. And you know, uh, it goes with um, saying that it's about um, it's about points. It's uh, it's a point system. Uh, that they're employing and uh, and the more points that you have the more chances of you winning in uh, their weekly, monthly and uh, special raffles and uh, in one of those raffles I actually uh, won a box of uh, wafers a box of um, uh, biscuits or wafers from Coca-Cola Philippines now Kohala Philippines is uh, an Indonesian brand who has bra- which has branched out here in the Philippines and you know it's very uh it's very um let's just say a uh, a good uh, competitor to our local brands but you know it's um it's all good in the hood either way what happened is that I won a box of uh a box of uh goods from them and you know uh, I never expected it to uh, to arrive uh, while I was cycling because I was cycling during that time. And then 
uh, you know, while I was cycling, I, uh, my, my parents, uh, basically the people that I have here in Intrepid HQ have told me, uh, a care package has arrived and it is the, it is that, uh, box of, uh, wafers and it's, uh, it's a package worth a thousand Philippine pesos. I'm not sure how much is it in uh, U.S. dollars, but I can um, estimate it to be twenty twenty to twenty five dollars. Maybe that's it. But yeah. Anyway, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to both Trax Philippines and Coca Cola for that uh, for that treat. And at least I have um, I have a snack supply here in Intrepid HQ for at least fifteen days. Maybe more, but we will see because I'm slowly depleting that supply as of this recording. But anyway, let's get to uh, uh, the other thing that I am going to promote, and that's myself. I am promoting my own uh, YouTube channel, uh, Intrepid Ian Renyon. I am also in the process of uh, renaming. I guess the Facebook channel currently it's called the Intrepid Show with Ian Rinyon, but I uh I might as well go ahead and uh uh consolidate or uh streamline the whole uh process or the whole uh system that I have in uh in my social media stuff. So maybe uh I'll rename it uh in the future, maybe. Maybe even after this recording, we'll see. But I do hope that you would uh, subscribe to me. I would link all of my social media uh, platforms in the YouTube description and in the Spotify show notes. Now with that, all that out of the way, let's get on with this episode's topic. Now, it is human nature for all of us to desire to get even when we get hurt. And in the case of the Catholic Church, especially those who just wanted to go to Mass without the need to cringe, it is easy to just walk away and do something to express their, their frustration. Certain individuals cannot help but expose liturgical abuses and other unusual statements and behavior in the Catholic Church. While their way of doing these things is questionable at best and unorthodox at worst, most of the time, they are right and they have the right to be angry. From what many could recall, this trend of putting worst practices and questionable perspectives in the church to light started as early as the internet became available to everyone and they can express their sentiments in a written form. Now, soon enough, they garnered a local and international audience who are willing to share about what they see as the shenanigans from within the church, especially in matters of faith, morals, and worship. People behind this kind of cause lean towards the sense of the sacred coined by the late Pope Benedict XVI, as well as advocating for the, lat- the use rather of, the, of Latin in the liturgy and the frequency of the older form of the Roman Holy Mass. Now, before, before going any further, we have to be mindful that these things are not really bad per se, especially if the incidents uncover very ugly but necessary truths. Now, some Catholics are forced to stir the pot and risk their reputation by applying some Karen slash Marites tactics to make certain individuals, groups, and institutions disturbed for what can be observed as bad behavior, and rightfully so. Now, there is a lot to unpack, and since this issue is a global thing, we are forced to limit the discussion to what is happening in the Philippine church specifically of late. And they have no other recourse that they can turn to other than praying to God. Now, this leads many of them to bring the ugly but necessary truth to light because that ugly but necessary truth not only hurts them physically but also mentally. 
Many may say that these people should apply Socrates' triple filter before exposing the bad apples that came from the tree of life, but that moment, the moment for that has passed. The camel's back already broke. And all this buzz about bad behavior by some Filipino Catholics became the talk of the town because of the visit of Bishop Athanasius Schneider of Astana in Kazakhstan. On a personal note, I attended his first ever Mass here in the Philippines on Leitare Sunday this year, the fourth Sunday of Lent. And the chapel where the Mass was offered in Manila was jam-packed. It was heaving to the brim because all Mass goers in Metro Manila have converged in that one single place. And I was there to witness it all. Now, in the aftermath of such a momentous event, a certain individual accused the good bishop of being a quote-unquote racist just because his or her favors were not granted. Now, this person continued that he or she would hit on those who sabotaged him or her tondo style, and the exact word the person used is gigripuhin, literally to make a faucet, faucet of blood by stabbing them on the side a notorious style of knife crime in in the Manila district of Tondo. Now, while no one can be certain about whether these statements were true or not, or even whether or not the person was remorseful of, of what was said after the fact, those statements were disturbing nonetheless. And I hope that person would do everything in his capacity to make up for it. And as of late, I guess he did. So uh, credit where credit is due. Now, with all that said, what seemed to be the, a great opportunity to revive the traditional movement in the country after COVID-19 was spoiled by this kind of language. Although this was a very huge blow to the liturgical community, this was not the last. It all came to a head during the Holy Week of 2023 because the bad liturgies and the shenanigans and the double life of church workers came back after three years of restricted celebrations, and for some, it just got worse. It seems the church did not learn from the lessons of the pandemic. Now, from what was reported across social, social media, incidents of liturgical abuses and other hot-button issues were both shocking and sad at the same time. In a nutshell, Concerned parishioners and parish workers are so disillusioned with the people who run their parishes that they have lost all trust in the church hierarchy and that that they resort to a cyber version of vigilante justice. And to add insult to injury, perhaps the people who reported these things online were bullied in their offline personal lives, tempting some of them to get even with those who wronged them. In short, there is a possibility that the bullied become the bullies in this vicious cycle of exclusion and even getting to the point of either rightfully calling out or wrongfully slandering certain individuals and churchmen. While the methods these people are questionable, we should understand where they are coming from and even, even rather if they decline their offers of becoming someone to talk to and vent out their concerns. Because from where I see it, those who rely on this kind of campaign to expose bad behaviors in the church are wounded and fed up beyond all recognition. Yes, the FUBAR term can be applied to them because it is what it is. Thus, we recall the saying, hurt people, hurt people. As someone who has suspected neurodivergent traits of late, and you may check out my videos uh, on that on my YouTube channel, and uh, you know, I have been suspecting for the longest time to be autistic or ADHD -er or both. We'll see. I totally understand why these people do what they do. I have been bullied and sidelined my whole life, and if not for the virtue of prudence, I would have done a way worse scheme than the ones we, certain, we currently notice. 
Now, unlike folks like Romar Chuka, who may or may not have any idea as to why some people operate the way they do, although I can definitely sense he and others like him really try to understand why, I somehow have an insider perspective as to why those who were frustrated with the church lash out their reproaches. In other words, been there, done that, but I can only speak for myself. There are countless others who do not have the support system or even a confidant to vent out their frustrations and pain with. And as of this recording, I am afraid Chuka has become a sellout. While I know he wants to use his marketing and management skills to produce his branding, and it's not a sellout in a secular sense, let's face it, I also tried to do that like I did at the beginning. But when it becomes apparent that you're becoming a public figure that uses religion as a way to promote yourself, so much so that a person uses the moniker, quote-unquote, the Catholic comedian to attract young Catholics to one's approach to Catholicism and comedy, it just reeks of hypocrisy. And I guess I can have this little joke that Chuka is just fortunate his name is spelled that way. I'm not going to say anything else about it. Now, those who, are, those who have been on the receiving end of physical and mental abuse just because they wanted to make liturgies full of beautiful meaning and call their peers and to genuine holiness think the time for silent contemplation has passed and it is time for action. They have been bearing patiently in silence for things to straighten out but to no avail. And yet, at least for the untrained eye or ear, they are perceived to be seeking domination by hook or by crook for the greater glory of God, even if it's not the case. On the other hand, Chuka and like-minded people think that that it would be best to continue dialogue to really know what the other side is clamoring about, to sit with those who were wounded by the very people who were supposed to heal them. But this, but in the process, rather, of saying these things, they carelessly label concerned parishioners and church folks as being nitpicky about faith, morals, and worship while turning a blind eye to things amatores liturgiae, the lovers of liturgy, are concerned about. What's tragic is that stuck in the middle, in the midst of this mudslinging, there are also those who lose their faith in God entirely because of what we as a collective are doing. And you know, we should be ashamed of that. With these in mind, this is a personal synthesis I would like to contribute. And I reflected on this while it was uh, the Easter season. The East, uh, we, while I, while it was on Easter tide, so there are some uh, references when it comes to the resurrection of Christ in this, or or the Paschal mystery in this, uh, in this, in these next lines that I'm going to say. It is hard to convince hurt people to even believe in the resurrection of Christ, the Paschal mystery, when the very people who represent the firstborn of the dead whether cleric or lay, are the first to hurt them. It may not be my case, but I personally know some people who are on the verge of indifference, unbelief, or even utter hatred because of what clerics did to them or even perhaps what they did not do. Take the late Sinead O'Connor, for example, that Irish uh, singer and musician who was absolutely known in Ireland but Around the world, she is more known for her cover of uh, Prince's song, Nothing Compares to You. She just died as of this recording. And uh, she is more known for her stunt in 1992, maybe a few months before I was even born, of tearing an image of Pope John Paul II on Saturday Night Live. Now... I'm, I do understand where she was coming from. And later in life, she became a Muslim. She was not someone who hates God. She just wanted, she just wanted to see God, but without the BS. And honestly, as a church, we failed her. 
there's a there's an article that I read. I am not sure how can I um, locate it again, but if I do, I would link it in the YouTube description and in the Spotify show notes. But yeah, I'll definitely uh, I'll, I definitely I definitely say we have failed Sinead O'Connor. Now, at the same time, we cannot blame those who nitpick about the liturgy and the personal life of those who work for it. For the longest time, they have been silenced or sidelined, and the haughty attitude of those who insist on what they do, especially if it is awkward in the context of the liturgy, is not helping at all. Now, whatever side you choose, let us hope that the Lord, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, would comfort the afflicted in their grief and resentment. May our eyes be open to the reality that we serve our neighbor best if we understand their struggles and pains, are patient with their outbursts, and help them to do something about what distresses them. We can only make hurt people stop hurting people if we, one, listen to them with our whole hearts and mean it, and two, include their input in the discussion. Never one without the other. And this is, just, this is not just limited to the liturgy wars, as this should be what we should cultivate as a society in general and as a church in particular. And I have reflected in that uh, essay, because this is actually an essay uh, that I've written on the Facebook page, that I have been reminded of the first lines of an old hymn I sung just, just days after Bishop Schneider's first Mass in Manila. And the lines that I have uh, I have uh, recalled from the, from the back of my head were what was the Moravian hymn, Join We All with One Accord. And it goes, Join we all with one accord, praise we all our common Lord. And there's also another line there in the first verse, Join we with the saints of old, no more strangers in the fold. Indeed, it is our collective hope that there will be no more strangers in the flock of the Good Shepherd, and no more hurt people hurting people. And being someone who adheres to the belief of the divine in collaboration with human endeavors, I invite you to pray for this nation we call home or at least think deeply about her benefit. And we would be praying the collect for the Feast of the Transfiguration. As I have I am recording this on the fourth of August twenty twenty three. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of Thine only begotten Son didst confirm the mysteries of the faith by the witness of the fathers, and in the voice which came down from the shining cloud didst wondrously foreshadow the perfect adop adoption of sons, vouchsafe in Thy loving mercy to make us co-heirs with this King of glory, and to grant that we may be made partakers of that same glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us these good islands, the pearl of the Orient seas for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our islands with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. 
defend our liberties and fashion into what united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And you with the spirit of wisdom, those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. On that note, I end today's podcast. I would like to thank you all for listening. The the recording of this episode would be available on YouTube and Spotify with further plans to expand to other platforms, so make sure to check out for that. All of the materials I have received for the I have referenced rather for this episode would be listed in the recording's description. And if you think there are things I might not have included in this recording, or if you want to have your say about the matter, Please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. And if there are also comments uh, sections on Spotify, I do hope there is. But I am I have I have to review that just as yet. Now, before you go, please make sure to like this video and share this around. Subscribe as well to my YouTube channel, Intrepid Ian Renyon, and ring the notification bell by selecting all so you, so you wouldn't miss out with whatever future content I may create, whether a podcast episode or a YouTube video. And please follow me along as well on Spotify for more podcast episodes. Now, with all that said, this is Entrepedi and Reunion reminding you to at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and as always, thank you for tuning in. From here in Entrepid HQ, See you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out.